Last week on The Club. My name is Bernie Murphy, Deputy Chairman of the Collingwood Football Club Archive Group. I wasn't feeling too well, so I went to the doctor and he said, well, you have acute leukaemia with no treatment, you'll last two months. Today I've had this magnificent chance for the boys to come in and wish me well. It just proves what a fabulous club Collingwood is. I couldn't have imagined that I'd end up here about to ride down the Champs Elysees with Robbie McEwen take us around. You just realise how fit they are and um, you know we like, we like to think we train pretty hard but these guys are almost at another level so it's, a, it's an amazing experience to be able to um, yeah, go around with these guys and see how they go about it. My name's Kevin White, I'm the sports scientist at Collingwood Football Club. My main area is probably GPS analysis, training loads and, and, and providing the data on players' uh, well-being to, to butters and then butters and then we'll, we'll relay that on to the rest of the coaching staff and Nathan Buckley. Well, you never said hello to me for, for a couple of months, you say hello to me now because you... Oh, you know. <laughs> The feedback that we actually get from the GPS ranges from the player's total distance, velocities, acceleration, the number of sprint efforts. So what we've got set up on the laptop now, uh, readings of player's heart rate, high intensity efforts, distance and player load. Basically I'm trying to filter through as much data from every individual. Probably my number one job at the minute is, is just uh, looking after the well-being of players and and making sure that the information that the coaches have is precise and, and that they can make their judgement on, on who should play every weekend on, on the, the information that I dissect for them. Tony, yeah. you want to have today off or? Yeah, no worries. Are you sure? Yeah, I'll rest, whatever. Hey, you got his PB and GPS at the weekend. Kevin has a very important role, you know, he's doing a lot of you know, things behind the scenes, you know, and um, we're doing a lot of number crunching and a lot of analysis. Um, you know, a lot of evaluation of players and uh, you know, provide me some uh, with you know, valuable information. If you can do the GPS guy on those guys, that yeah. way we track their velocity yeah. and, their, and their volume, that would be great. Yeah, yeah look, I mean, sports science has a, you know, an important part, not just in you know, preparation and monitoring, uh, but also projecting forward as well. So I'm trying to identify certain trends of certain players and how they're actually tracking towards that point in the season. It's crucial that we find out what, okay, these players are starting to become vulnerable or susceptible to, say, injuries or, or an overload. Um, so we use you know, our sports scientists to be able to you know, track some of those very important kind of characteristics. So the players now are doing uh, band assisted running. This will help them increase their speed and velocity for later in the training. I'm just keeping an eye now on the, the speeds and velocities of the players as they go through uh, the more intense phase of the warm up. It's basically what I'll be looking at now. Uh, on the laptop, I'll be looking at the top speeds that they get, the accelerations and decelerations of the players, and then the overall load. For Wednesday is game simulation, uh, so Box and our coaches will be looking for an intense session, short, sharp. So we can see here, bottom right of screen, number 10, Scott Pendlebury. Uh, so we've got a live feed of and um, where the players are positioned in real time. Uh, and the parameters now that we are looking at is the odometer, which is the distance in meters. So you can see Pendle's now is up to 2.3. His B3 efforts is uh, high intensity efforts. Uh, and then obviously we're tracking his speed. All right, so Caelan Mooney, our fastest player now, is taking off. So he's hit 27, 28. 28 kilometers an hour. Moons would usually had a max velocity of maybe 32 kilometers an hour.
So we've just come to the end of training now. Uh, some of the notable uh, training contributions today came from Tyson Goldsack, covered the most training volume and had the highest amount of repeated efforts. Uh, also of note, we had uh, Alan Didak, who showed some more positive signs that he's uh, developing well through his rehab, uh, as well as Travis Coke and Chris Dawes, who again um, were well above average for repeated high intensity efforts today. So uh, all in all, it was a good training session today and we we'll look forward to a big game now at the weekend. So I'm um, in a cab on the way to Scotia Stadium and there's about four, four and a half hours before uh, the game actually starts so the reason I'm going so early is it's the first time uh, going up to see Scotia. Uh, I want to familiarise myself with the ground. When we go into game day I've got uh, multiple roles. I firstly go out and set up the GPS out on the bench. So the one thing I'm looking at now is the roof so I'm hoping that and the roof won't block out the, the signal from the antenna, the GPS, so uh, that's probably the one concern at the minute. Fingers crossed. Skoda Stadium twilight match. Big afternoon for the Magpies in their search towards September. Ball down to Elliot, roves it well, crumbs it well, hooks it around. Pretty good kick, is it straight or is Cloak going to get there? It just went down on him quickly, but he's quick enough to recover. Got boot to ball, that's a goal. The kick is going to be a tough one for Palmer. That's a great bit of work to uh, get across by Elliot. They do a lot of work on trying to win. <laughs> Here we go, boys. You're ready to go. You can get changes. Stand up. You're ready. Stand up. You're ready. And so the, another opportunity here for the Pies. This is Mooney. And this for his first goal in AFL football. In his third game. Not bad. Oh, not bad. Straight through. And he's pleased. He's got his first goal. Hello, Moons. Yeah, <laughs> I reckon Cloak has worked him over a little bit in the last few minutes. Speaking about working over, big finish from Beams. Over to Dawes, now Buckley, now Seedsman. He knew the Cloak was free, should steady, should straighten up, should kick a goal. Kicks his second, and that's reward for effort for him. Here they go, the Pies. For Solo from outside 50. Sets it up, Cloak's got it back into it. Over the top, he's not needed because he's there again. <laughs> they might have nice. time for one more. Need to mark inside 50, Cloak's got it. He's gonna line up for goal number six. Cloak from 45. He's got six. And he's got the goal right on the siren. An impressive performance by the Magpies in the last quarter. Sounds good today. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, look, overall, you know, we were, we were very pleased and the work rate um, you know, is pretty impressive. The intensity and the accelerations is outstanding. You know, a lot of the players got some high volumes. You know, and in running, so yeah, it was a good outcome. Yeah, look, we had some processes in place, and you know, we achieved our rotations you know, for the whole game. So, you know, we we're very pleased. The end of a pretty long day, uh, but uh, became what we ultimately wanted, uh, and that was four points and a percentage boost and win. So, uh, I'm just in the middle of packing up the bag now. GPS analysis worked pretty well tonight. Rotations was good. We'll be on the bus in the next ten minutes. We'll go back to the hotel and uh, have, a, have a hydro session in the pool and the boys will have some dinner. So, uh, yeah, next week it all starts again. Five games to go and then finals, so uh, bring it on. Still to come on the club.
Well, tonight we're setting off around the city um, with the Salvation Army. We're going to hit a couple of spots around town. Hopefully we can set, feed some hungry people tonight. It's Daisy here on location. Today's the day off for most of the boys, not for me. I'm filling in for Husey uh, on Nova 100. Got Bucks up next. His 40th birthday today. Looking forward to asking him a few questions.